2022 brought a whole host of authority figures to WWE slash WWF with two brands, a lot of GMs, a lot of just owners were partners. And who delivered on the grandest stage of them all? It was the only company left. It was the first year in a long time that it was pretty much the only company standing. TNA, but, brother. Nah, uh, TNA did come around, but you know what? At the start of the year, it wasn't there, all right? So reel it in, son. WCW, ECW is dead. Ric Flair appeared. And we kind of wish he didn't, because he's in last place here, deservedly so. Yes, rightfully in last place. I think by a, a decent margin, I don't think you could put Ric Flair third. I honestly don't. No. I think Ric Flair has to go fourth, dead last. Although, I think Ric Flair was not too bad up until the brand split. I think after it is where he, he fucking nosedived. Ah, he was good until the brand split, and then it was ever... It was the night after the, the draft, he just... Completely went to shit. Yeah, whatever he was on went to his fucking melon. So yeah, sucks for Ric Flair, and he's kind of fortunate that there wasn't a fifth authority figure of the year, or else he probably wouldn't have made this list. No, he wouldn't have made this list, absolutely not. His feud with Austin, it, it left a sour uh, taste in the mouth. It did. it did. Anyway, now, I'm all grown up now, yeah. Stephanie McMahon in third place, 14%. I think she did a, a good job. We had never, re well, I say we'd never really seen Stephanie in an authority figure. When you're in a McMahon, you're kind of always yeah. an authority figure. But, uh, I mean, yeah, previously in her other roles, I mean, well, you could argue she was the main authority figure during the Alliance, or at least one of them. So, yeah, she's had, she's had this kind of role before, but she took it to the next level here, you know, the GM of SmackDown, first time that we've seen a woman really in this position. I can't really recall any other time where you had a woman lead a show without any sort of combat, any sort of uh, challenge for the leadership role. Vicky Guerrero. Was she here in 2002? No, she wasn't, but I'm just I'm thinking past then, to be fair. But what I would say is, Stephanie, man, I think there was times where... I don't know, like the intros to the show. Big show, big show, taking on Kurt, Kurt, uh, 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 Angle. I mean, it just kept like, like I mean, that's not really Steph McMahon, but I feel like Bischoff just nailed the intros to Rob, but Stephanie didn't. Now, well, I'm not comparing Stephanie to Bischoff. I'm comparing Stephanie to Ric Flair, and I thought she did a much better job. She did. Well, let's talk about her daddy. No chance in hell. You've got 74 754 votes, 29% voting for Big Finny Mac, Vincent Kennedy, McMahon. And, I mean, normally McMahon is always going to top these lists because he, he is that man. He's the chairman of the board. He's probably, if, if not the biggest, one of the biggest heels in wrestling of all time. And the fact that he didn't top this list just shows you how good the guy in first place is. But, yeah... McMahon, really good run. Uh, you, you compare what he was doing on SmackDown compared to Ric Flair, I mean, just night and day, really. You know what? Controversial, maybe it's not. I think McMahon, from, like, late 97 up until about 2011, is probably the greatest run in wrestling history. Well, he's got the longevity, hasn't he? Like, I mean, <laughs> like, nah, he no. Name me a But time. see, the thing, right? What you say is true there, because... McMahon's a prominent figure in all the good periods of wrestling. When you think about it, people say, well, maybe not people, but we say the Attitude Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era, right, are the two best errors in wrestling. McMahon's probably the guy that's the most prominent figure in both of those errors. Yeah. There's nobody, yeah, you could argue like a Taker or a Triple H, but I think McMahon's the man I think of. He was always like the centre. No, he was. What I would say is, what, what, see McMahon, name me a segment he came out and didn't deliver. Like, he, he, he fell flat. McMahon's the fucking man. Pun intended. I don't care if he likes to shit on people. He, he can he, he shit on me, buddy. No, no, he can shit on whoever he wants, but you know what? See the fans, he didn't shit on us. He fucking delivered. Oh, he's a, he's a misogynist, he's a whatever. He fucking gave us some of the greatest fucking television we'll ever see. So know your fucking role. In the door, no. Yeah, see, well, Triple like, H is virtually shitting on us right now. No, put a bit of fucking respect on the guy's name. It's no, it's a disgrace. That he'd be booted of his company. No, it, it actually disgusts me. No, he's the fucking man. I think we McMahon's should, the man. I think we should have just ended wrestling. I think wrestling should have ceased to exist. See when McMahon sold his last year, 
They should have just fucking ended it all. Yeah. WWE, AEW, TNA. Well, TNA should end it a long time ago. But anyway, the point is... No, it's a fucking joke, though. Tom Hanks, right? Big nonsense. Yeah, he, go, he, he, goes he still there. gets to be Woody. Aye, look at hey, my, boss, I'm Woody. Look at one of people that go, have been to Epstein, Epstein's Island and they've been to Batson Island. This Big guy, Joe fucking Biden. Aye, this guy does hee-haw. This guy consensual shitting and all of a sudden <laughs> he loses everything. He's been shat on. I don't get it. I really don't get it. McMahon, what a guy. You know, I'm tempted to fuck him in top spot here. Sorry, Eric. Nah. <laughs> I'm back, and I'm better than ever. I mean, what a debut from Eric Bischoff. Uh, Although, I actually think him appearing backstage and interacting with Booker T was a bit fucking weird. <laughs> I mean, it was, but... Booker T's looking at him like... I mean... I, he's a white guy in Harlem. Despite not being a wrestler, you, you could very well put this guy as number one. If you're talking about the run of 2002, he, he's right up there. Despite no, I, being a personality. Absolutely. When I, when I think of 2002, I will just think of Eric Bischoff because he came in when Raw, let's be honest, was knees. really stale. Yep. And there's no doubt that SmackDown was the better show up until that point. And he's just came into Raw. He changed the game. He freshened things up. And it was just, it was iconic seeing Eric Bischoff, the guy that spent years trying to put WWF and Mr. McMahon out of business turn up on Monday Night Raw, the flagship show, and try and... From going from trying to put them out of business to helping them yeah, grow no. and helping them, you know, become number one. Well, Raw become number one. Absolutely insane moment, and then just some of the dialogue and everything he did. Again, with McMahon, like, a segment with Bischoff never fell flat. His interaction with everybody was golden. I think his, his feud with Stephanie I thought was great. His interactions with everyone else was good. Uh, just never a, I mean, a, a bad I moment. Didn't like him gifting the belt to Triple H, but... Well, maybe that was one bad moment, like, but... Again. I'll forgive it. You know, I'll, I'll forgive it, damn it. Anyway, let's look at the comments. Easy, he was back and better than ever. Bored now. I totally agree, bored now. He's, I mean, I, I think Bischoff... I think Bischoff's run in WWE surpasses WCW. And I thought, he, I thought he was good in WCW, but I think his WWE run was better. No, I'd agree. Uh, PJ Leon says, Eric, the only man to manage WCW, WWE, and TNA. Tony Khan should hire him. He still has a great mind for the business. You know, that's probably one of the only things that could save. Uh, people blame Bischoff, right? I'm sick of these people that say, oh, Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan killed TNA. When Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan came into TNA. TNA was great, like, for the next couple of years. There's no, there's no doubt about it. And I'm not, I'm not saying it was bad before they came in. And you can argue that TNA was better before they came in. I, I wouldn't deny that. But let's not pretend that they came in and T TNA literally went to shit. Yeah. Bischoff and Hogan gave us some great years in TNA. TNA went to shit after they left. There's people out there that think TNA picked up in, like, 2017, 18, 19, 20. What, when they lost their TV deal and nobody was watching? That was somehow better when they actually had a it fucking... It up when the TV company wanted to pick it up. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. It's actually crazy that people think that TNA is in a better state now than, than they were in 2012 when Hogan and Bischoff were there. And you're like, I don't know what planet, like what planet are you on about? If WCW or TNA had unlimited money like AEW, they'd still be fucking around. I know TNA is around, but to a better capacity. AEW is only around because it's got unlimited money. These people that think Tony Khan and the EVPs are, are better businessmen than Bischoff and Hogan need fucking shot and, like, prop better leadership. I mean, come on. Yeah, I think the, the problem TNA had was, I mean, Dixie Carter's dad, he wasn't as stupid as Tony Khan's dad. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> he, he wouldn't allow his daughter to burn through as much <laughs> cash as uh, Tony Sr. allows Tony Jr. to do. It's just a deadly game. But the Carter family are supposedly rich. And I believe last time I checked, richer than McMahon. They're just not dumb. Just not dumb. Didn't spend it all on shit wrestling. Big John says, when the bitch would give people the free second warning, it's the three minute warning, mate. Yeah, uh, yeah, great. Uh, but you know what? I think it was. I think. I think it was more great for just Bischoff's delivery and the the way he would like summon what? three minute warning. Yeah, once Bischoff like didn't really 
appear with him. Yeah, I see, when, see when Bischoff disappeared and they just came out and had matches, it was like, just a couple of fat guys really into it with a, yeah. ga- a game manager. Yeah. Um, Loto Bika says Bischoff easily. He was new. Fence was there consistently since 98. I mean, that's, that's fair. I mean, see if we had Bischoff in WWE since 98 and then McMahon just randomly appeared for the first time in 2002, you'd probably have put McMahon at the top of this list. But Bischoff was fresh, so it is what it is. EPT says Easy E was the man. Dan X, EY Smells, that was probably the only time I liked Eric. Uh, Loto Bika says, yeah, and the show was video when he left in 2005. Everyone in the IWC said Raw was weird without him. He left too soon. Ricky Juice says, hands down, Bischoff. <laughs> Literally made me stop wrestling, watching wrestling by 04. So does that mean he was good? Does that mean he was bad? Or what, what do you mean? What do you mean, Ricky? Yeah, because Bischoff was... He was a, he sat the full year as GM in 04, so... I right, well, I think Julie meant... Actually, Eric left in 2005 after John Cena beat Kurt Angle and Finn's dumped him in the trash. Yeah, I think he did leave very prematurely. I don't know the ins and outs. I don't know if he didn't agree to a new deal or McMahon wanted rid of him, but... I mean, at least he didn't just fade out. At least they actually gave him a proper ending. But I would agree. You know, Bischoff's run's really small, if you think of it. I would have liked to have seen Bischoff in charge of Raw... Well, you say really small. I mean, it's like a three-year run. Yeah, but compared to other people, man, in the business, three-year runs nothing. Not mm, true. Adam Pearce has been in charge for longer than that. Yeah, no, but I'm saying that even look, no, but it doesn't have to be in charge. I'm talking about just even in the company. So you look at Heyman. How long's Heyman been in WWE? Ah, <sighs> but Heyman's a fucking kiss arse, isn't he? Like, well, I'm sorry, Mister McMahon. Absolutely, but anyway, Paul Heyman, could he win? Who's going to win 2003? Is it going to be Uncle Eric? Yeah, but look, if you look at Bish, if you look at Heyman's run in his charge of SmackDown GM and his, his run in charge of ECW in WWE, it wasn't long at all. Nah, well, ECW. Combined length is like a year and a half, probably, at best. Probably. Anyway, guys, that's where we're going to leave it. Can't complain with Eric Bischoff, but you've got to show love for McMahon. McMahon is the man. Yeah. That's uh, that's quite, that's quite simple.